Running large language models usually means bulky hardware. Usually. But what if I need power and portability? And I still want to stay local. I don't want to use ChatGPT or anything in the cloud. How do you do that? Well, today I'm testing four portable setups for running local LLMs, each setup more powerful and more challenging than the last. I'll start off with something compact enough to fit in my backpack. I kick things off simply with a tiny GMK Tech K8 Plus mini PC running purely on its CPU. This thing is about $550. Let's see how it holds up. GPU offload is gonna be nothing. We're gonna run this on the CPU first and load model. 26.82 tokens per second. CPU only running Llama 3.2 and 3 billion parameter model. That's not bad for CPU only, but it is only 3 billion parameters. Performance here is limited because CPUs aren't optimized for heavy parallel computations required by larger models. But many PCs like this one offer have a little bit extra. This particular one comes with an AMD Radeon integrated GPU or iGPU, and that can actually be used for LLMs. So here I'm using LM Studio, and it gives me the ability to offload all the layers of this particular large language model onto the GPU. By the way, the more parameters a model has, typically the more layers it has. And LM Studio is actually pretty good at finding that split point for you, but you can override it if you want to. Um, sometimes it's a little bit dangerous to do that, as we'll see later on. I also go into more details about this stuff in other videos. Ah, look at that dedicated GPU memory. We're almost at the limit, 2.6 out of three here. Okay. 34 tokens per second, actually pretty reasonable. Offloading to the GPU slightly improved performance here because GPUs handle parallel tasks more efficiently. That's what they're for. Now what happens when I push a little bit to a 14 billion parameter model? This one is 8.99 gigabytes on disk and I don't think this is gonna fit on the GPU, obviously, but let's see what it does on the CPU with these 48 layers all running on the CPU. Let's load the model. There is 32 gigs of RAM on that machine and that should be plenty to load this model up. You see how the GPU memory is still being used a little bit, but most of the memory is being used is the system memory here. Seven tokens per second, not bad. Uh, I thought this wasn't gonna work, but it did, pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's eject that. And now I'm going to load it up again. And this time we'll try to offload 48 layers to the GPU. It's not gonna work. It's gonna give us something, but maybe it'll help out just a tad bit. And this is on the partially on the iGPU of the GMK Tech. We're still doing the Quen 2.5 quarter 14B instruct for quant. And we're getting nine tokens per second, pretty good. For a 14 billion model running mostly on the CPU, there's that little GPU spike where it uh, used it a little bit. It's using as much as it can on the GPU, but most of it is on the CPU. Larger models start showing strain here due to limited GPU memory, causing frequent swapping between CPU and GPU, and that slows things down, obviously. Clearly there's room to grow here. Next, we're gonna try a dedicated GPU, and this device is meant for gamers, but it doesn't mean we can't use it for LLMs. In fact, a lot of these consumer-based GPUs are meant for gamers, but as it happens, GPUs are really good at parallel processing, which is good for LLMs too. So just because it's labeled as a gamer device doesn't mean it's limited to that. You can use it for both. All right, this is the next level, the One X Player Portable AMD Radeon 7800M GPU. It's compact, it's loaded with connectivity options, and it's priced around $1,000. But it's using Oculink, which could be a little finicky. You have to make sure that you turn on the PC after everything's plugged in, and you cannot unplug the Oculink cable while the PC is on, otherwise things are just not work very well and it might damage your equipment too most of the time this works just fine but for this video i had to restart a couple of times i'm not sure what happened once i got past the frustration the performance payoff was immediate now since i've plugged this baby in we're gonna have another gpu entry under our task manager so this is the 780 the igpu we already looked at that and here's the new gpu the 7800 hoo, hoo, hoo. this one is a little bit of a beast here for such a small package but let's see how it does now, if you want to see what's running you can click on the settings here and the hardware in lm studio and you'll see that the gpu that's detected is the amd radeon 7800m it seems like it's picking the best option and giving us almost 12 gigs of vram what was it we ran quen 2.5 coder 14b let's load it up and we're gonna do full 
GPU offload, load model. There's that dedicated GPU memory being filled up. Nice, we managed to fit that inside and we're trying to beat 9.5 tokens per second. Hi there. Oh, 32.67 tokens per second. That's quite nice. This significant jump is thanks to the dedicated GPU's higher memory capacity and better optimization for parallel processing. But scaling up to 32 billion parameters quickly revealed a harsh reality. What's it gonna do with this 32 billion parameter model, I wonder? Let's offload as much as we can to the GPU. I'm gonna specify maximum, but LM Studio is gonna decide. And it's having a hard time stuffing that in. <laughs> Don't even leave that comment. I know what you're thinking. Look at that memory bouncing around. That doesn't look good. It's not a good sign when you see memory going up and down like that. Well, let's try it out. Now it's going quite slow, quantized down to four bits. GPU contention, dot, dot, dot. That's a fight for your life. 0 0.7 tokens per second. Uh, not very usable. Here, performance crashes because even this dedicated GPU hits memory limits at such large model sizes. Shh. Hey, jumping in here real quick. If you're enjoying this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I want to thank the members of this channel. This video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to join and become a member, I really appreciate that as well. Members get extra bonus videos and we get to chat and you get a little icon by your name. And I'm really thankful for my members. Seriously. All right, let's keep this short. Back to the show. Clearly, bigger GPUs might promise more, but is bigger always better when portability is key? Well, I'm about to find out. Enter the RTX 5080 with a portable dock. I've shown this on my channel before, how I built it. I used to have a 4090 in it. I'll link a video down below where I set this whole thing up. Oh, again, for the RGB, definitely need that. The 5080 comes with 16 gigs of VRAM, so that gives us a little bit more room for the LLMs, but this setup is obviously bulkier, it's obviously more powerful and theoretically superior. This full setup, including dock and power supply, set me back about $2,200. It's also not exactly pocket friendly, but still portable. Sort of, you can do it. Just get a nice case for it. Don't, don't carry it like this. It's just gonna get damaged. Let's start with our 14 billion and we're offloading all 48 layers. There it is getting loaded pretty fast on that GPU. Nice little ramp up on the memory there. Hi there. Initially, the 14 billion parameter model run looked promising. 54.9 tokens per second. Impressive, but is it worth lugging this thing around? Superior CUDA optimization and more GPU memory explain this impressive speed boost. However, when I push to 32 billion parameters, the RTX 5080 begins to struggle. 32 billion. This one is suggesting we offload only 31 out of 64, but we're gonna bump this up all the way and let's load it up. What's going on here? This should fill up the memory completely and use some CPU system memory. Ooh, that's not looking good. Did it crash? Yeah, failed to load the model. Let's take LM Studio's recommendation and do 34 out of 64 to see if that helps things out. Did it load? I think it loaded. Okay, <laughs> look at our system memory though. Wow, that's not looking super happy. Anything blowing up? Nope, but I see that the CPU is the one doing all the work here not the GPU. This is not gonna be fast. One eternity later. We got a message, folks. We got a hello. Obviously, this is extremely slow. I'm gonna stop it. With partial GPU offloading, the CPU crawled at 0.08 tokens per second. Far from practical. These crashes were a little bit surprising, but also not really. We are pushing this thing quite a lot. So definitely some memory management issues is what I'll blame for this. Obviously, any LLM larger than this is not gonna run. This is where we're gonna need to move into a 5090 territory. I'm still trying to get my hands on one of those. It's not been easy, but it should be coming. So don't miss that when I do. I want my satisfaction. So let's go back to that Llama 3.23 billion and load that one up. I just wanna see this thing working fast. And so we have a comparison point for our next machine. Hi there. Boom. Now, reverting briefly to a smaller model was pretty impressive, but does performance at this scale justify sacrificing true portability? 171 tokens per second, fast, but maybe not game-changing. Obviously, great speeds for smaller models, 
but practicality suffers as size and power requirements increase. Smaller models, of course, are impressive to watch <laughs> as they print stuff out really quickly on the 5080 card and the 4090 that I've shown before on the channel, but the usefulness of these models is limited. But what if I didn't have to compromise between power and portability? This next device promises exactly that, but at a premium. Finally, we've got my daily driver, which is the M4 Max MacBook Pro. Sleek, premium, expensive. Starting at $4,000. And with my RAM upgraded to 128 gigabytes, that model starts at $5,000. However, it's shockingly capable and has the added bonus of being fully operational on battery power, which you can't get with the other machines. With 128 gigabytes of unified memory, almost everything offloads seamlessly to the GPU. Since on Apple Silicon, the memory is actually shared between the CPU and the GPU, so there is not extra copying back and forth, which saves the load time and also if the model should happen not to fit exactly like let's say you have a 96 gigabyte model and we have 96 gigabyte of vram on this thing because apple silicon theoretically can use 75 percent of the total ram available for the gpu then you can still offload some layers to the cpu and it still won't crash theoretically take a look at activity monitor here we'll take a look at memory and we're using 55 out of 128 gigabytes i got a couple other things running on this machine already we get instant responsiveness on the Llama 3.2, 3 billion parameter model, 146 tokens per second. It just feels really fast, even though it's not faster than the 5080. Unified memory architecture eliminates bottlenecks between the CPU and the GPU. So that's what boosts responsiveness here. When we scale up, it's surprisingly capable. Here's Quen Coder 14 billion instruct. Hi there. 48 tokens per second. This is actually faster. Now here's Quencoder 32 billion and LM Studio is telling me I can offload all 64 layers. Let's check it out. Remember with the AMD we got 0.7 tokens for this model and with the RTX 5080 we got 0 0.08 tokens. So let's see how this one does. Hi there. 25 tokens per second at 32 billion parameters. Now we're talking capable model, 32 billion parameters and a decent speed. But can we push this a little bit more? Why don't we go to 70? DeepSeek R1 Distal Llama, 70 billion, quantized down to four. Yeah, we could still offload all 80 layers. Let's load it up. That's pretty good. 10 tokens per second here on a 70 billion parameter model. Look at our memory though. We're up to 91 gigabytes. The M4 Max chips have a high bandwidth, higher than the M4 and the M4 Pro, almost twice higher. This bandwidth of the unified memory allows effortless scaling to much larger models. And pushing to the edge with a 70 billion parameter model at Q8, that's quantized to 8-bit, which is still a very large model. And finally, we've reached a point where LM Studio is saying, well, you better not put all your layers on the GPU. Maybe only 66 out of 80. But I'm going to push it all the way up to 80 and see what happens there. I should probably listen to LM Studio more often. And we're using 114 gigabytes. This is all my processes. This is not just this model, by the way. So let's say hi there. 6.45 tokens per second. I can't believe this is actually working. I think we have a winner. Surprising stability at extreme scales, a testament to advanced memory management in Apple Silicon. Now I use Windows, Linux, and Mac, and I'm not trying to drool all over the, <laughs> the Apple Silicon ecosystem, but there's some things that Apple did right here. So yeah, leave your fanboy comments down below if you want to, but I'll give credit to where credit is due. These are not the fastest machines, but they can handle a lot. Clearly impressive, but what's the right choice for you? you. Obviously, there's huge price differences between these setups. And also, are you going to be gaming or not? Or are you strictly productivity? So what's the best portable solution for local LLMs? Well, it depends entirely on your priorities. For gaming and broader ML flexibility, AMD or NVIDIA GPUs have their merits. But for pure LLM performance combined with ultimate portability, the MacBook Pro M4 Max is tough to beat. In the end, you got to ask yourself, which models do you truly need to run? How portable should your setup really be? And what's your ideal balance between cost and convenience. To see an in-depth test of my RTX 4090 on that GPU dock, check out this video over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.